The summer travel season is nearly here, which means millions of people will be heading for national parks and national forests. As it turns out, a few of them won't be coming back. Each year, hundreds of people are reported missing in our parks and forests. Most are eventually found, but there's a smaller category of cases that never get solved, including a few close to home. The I-Team's George Knapp is here with the story. George. You know, it's not a revelation to say that people get lost out in the wilderness or in forest areas. We're talking about a different kind of mystery, though. Disappearances that are not caused by predator attacks or criminals hiding out there in the woods or just bad luck. A former cop has put together hundreds of case files regarding clusters of missing persons in national parks where the circumstances are flat out strange. But don't expect any answers from the Park Service. At the end of the night, I was staying in a, a motel off the government or off the Park Service land. I get a knock on the door. The person who confided in law enforcement veteran David Politis was a government employee who told one heck of a story about people who vanish in national parks, places like Yosemite, but also national forests, including the Toyabe, west of Las Vegas. In the years since the knock at the door, Politis has scoured small town newspaper archives and pestered federal agencies for records. He found so many cases of missing people that a planned book became two, filled with more than 400 cases of people who went into national parks but never came out. People disappear in the wilds all the time, and we're talking about something different. These were unusual things that don't make sense that happened to cluster together cluster together in three to four, sometimes as many as 20, 30 people missing at one location. The individual cases are strange enough, Politis says, but stranger still were the reactions of federal agencies when he asked for public records. And when we FOIA'd them, we got a response back that they don't keep any lists of missing people. The response was not only no, but hell no, he says. So he began putting his own list together and discovered what appears to be nearly 30 clusters of disappearances in national parks and forests, cases which meet a narrow set of odd characteristics. The people who vanish often do so right under the noses of others. In many cases of kids, their parents' noses. Being parents and being responsible people, we understand there's no way my son or daughter wouldn't know the way back from being just down the road getting the ball. But it happens all the time. It happens all the time. The missing defy logic. They hike uphill, for instance, often steep climbs. Children as young as two or three are found a day or two later many miles away and over mountain ranges. Some kids are found in phenomenal distances away that would make no logical sense to any parent. Weird things happen to their clothing. The missing often shed their clothes right away, even in bad weather. Clothes are found sometimes neatly folded, but not the people. The ranger described to me, if you were standing straight up and you just had your shirt or just had your pants on and you melted directly into your pants, that's what it looked like to him. The pants were laying on the ground in a very neat pile. The missing defy normal search and rescue practices. Bodies are found in places that are all but inaccessible, or they're found in the open, in areas that were repeatedly searched earlier. Bloodhounds or other tracker dogs are often befuddled. If the dog can't find a scent, that's a red flag. If a dog, a canine dog, a trained dog, is put on the scent at the point last seen, and it lays down and it doesn't want to track anymore, red flag. And that happens more than you think. Nevada doesn't have a major cluster, but it has plenty of cases. Children who vanished around Lake Tahoe, in the center of the state near Tonopah, and at Mount Charleston. In 1966, six-year-old Larry Jeffrey of Henderson disappeared while playing with his two brothers, setting off a massive 16-day search by as many as 1,000 men. Former Sheriff Ralph Lamb remembers it clearly. Walked away from camp. Never did hear from him, never did see him, never did find him. We had hundreds of people there working, almost shoulder to shoulder. There's no large predators per se. Um, so we can't worry about mammals taking him. And he was in a fairly remote area where there's no vehicular access, so there's no car abduction. This boy just walked into oblivion. And in, a, in an age where you have aircraft up looking for the boy. You have 800 people scouring the mountain. You should be able to find him. That coupled with, if he was deceased, part of that uh, ongoing effort is bringing in cadaver dogs. The odor coming off the body, they should have found that. They didn't. 
Other aspects of this mystery are even more bizarre, though difficult to explain in just a couple of minutes. Example, many of the vanished who are found alive are kids too young to speak or kids who can't communicate because of disabilities. Some who are found alive say they can't remember what happened to them. In his books, David Politis reports on why some obvious explanations simply don't apply here, but he stops short of giving his own theory or explanation. Politis says he doesn't want to scare people away from visiting parks, but thinks people need to be made aware. A month ago, we asked the Park Service and the Forest Service for their lists of local missing persons cases still waiting. We have links and more information about all this stuff on our website. Check it out. Very interesting. Thanks. Thanks. Very interesting. Thank you, George.